You've chosen a great morning to be at C3 Langford. Is there anyone here for the very first time? Anyone? I can't read these guys over here. We've got a couple of people over here who are being pointed at (laughs) from a couple of different directions. Why don't we give them a welcome clap? It's always awkward putting up your hand in a new place. Okay, we are going to do some announcements. Worship and prayer night is every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. So we will start the night with dinner at 6.30, then 7 to 8 is a time of worship, prayer and communion. It was so awesome on Wednesday. Really encourage you to come along. Love Langford. We are back this week. So exciting. 5 to 6.30 p.m. All are welcome. Come have some fellowship and some food. What is better in life? Young adults, you guys won't have a slide for this because we absolutely put it in at the last minute. But young adults, we are going to have an event on the 28th of October. We are going to hang out, play some board games. Everyone's going to bring $10 for some pizza. We're going to have a good time. If you want to know more about it, see me or Jess. Jess is at the back. Absolutely not expecting me to call her out. But come see one of us if you want my details. It's going to be a good night. And then finally, my favorite announcement, youth group. We are back on every Friday night at the church, 6.30 to 8. We had so much fun on Friday. We ate some KFC. We heard a lot about chicken nuggets. And we played some classic youth group games. So if you are in high school, come along. We have so much fun. Come speak to me or Pastor Lisa if you want more info on that one. And then high school, guys, we are going to do a youth Sunday service today in the back room. So after this, we're going to go head out there and have some fun. Otherwise, Kids Church, you guys have been so patient. You can head out the back, go have some fun. Anyone from ages three all the way through primary school, you are super welcome to join them. They have a lot of fun in there. Otherwise, we're going to have a minute of greeting. Go find someone, shake their hand, give them a hug, give them a fist bump, give them a high five, and we'll be back in a minute.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, C3 Langford. Come take, find yourself a seat, preferably closer to me. No. <laughs> I'm so glad, right. <laughs> How is everybody this morning? Good, fabulous. So, <laughs> what a great time of worship. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus into every circumstance that everybody is facing right now. We had a few things happen this morning and we're going to pray into some things this morning. We all see what's going on around the world. We all see what's going on in Israel. We all see, and we have, there's so many things when you go on social media that um, can talk about who's choosing whose side and what for what reason this is happening and all these other things. But at the end of the day, this is not God. This is not peace. This is evil, things that happen, and we want to pray into that. This is not the agenda. We're stopping for a moment. And I'm going to ask Elton up here. We have been praying as a church, Psalm 91, over uh, just different calls to global mobilization, for, for what's going on with terrorists and all this sort of stuff. And we're just going to stop. And we're just going to pray Psalm 91 together as a church. So if you all want to bring it up together, we can all say this together. So I'm going to get everybody to stand. <clears throat> Elton's going to come up. He's going to say... And declare Psalm 91. We're all going to say it together. This is all of us together. Then he's just going to pray a quick prayer over the world and declaring that is true. Then we're just going to stand in the gap for sickness. For people who are sick. We had Pete uh, unable to take his breath properly this morning. So we had an ambulance come here this morning and take him. So we're praying for him. Could get him. We didn't need to get emotional. But... Well, that's what we're speaking on. We're speaking on family. So we're going to stand here this morning and we're going to pray for him. We've got some other members in our church that are facing really significant sicknesses amongst their families. So we're going to pray for that. And we're going to declare God's truth, God's love, God's life, God's breath. And God's healing amongst people. So we're going to start with all saying Psalm 91. Okay, I'm going to read from the New English Translation. Psalm 91. As for you, the one who lives in the shelter of the sovereign one and resides in the protective shadow of the mighty king, I say this about the Lord, my shelter and my stronghold, my shelter and my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. He will certainly rescue you from the snare of the hunter and from the destructive plague. He will shelter you with his wings. You will find safety under his wings. His faithfulness is like a shield or a protective wall. You need not fear the terrors of the night, the arrows that flies by day, the plague that comes in the darkness, or the disease that comes at noon. Though a thousand may fall beside you and a multitude on your right side, it will not reach you. Certainly you will see it with your very own eyes. You will see the wicked paid back. For you have taken refuge in the Lord, my shelter, the sovereign one. No harm will overtake you. No illness will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you in all you do. They will lift you up in their hands. So you will not slip and fall on a stone. You will subdue a lion and a snake. You will trample underfoot a young lion and a serpent. The Lord says... Because he is devoted to me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he is loyal to me. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will, will, I will be with him when he is in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him honor. I will satisfy him with long life. And I will let him see my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our salvation, Heavenly Father. Thank you for protection, Heavenly Father. Thank you for salvation, Heavenly Father. Thank you for protection, Heavenly Father. Thank you for our salvation, Heavenly Father. And thank you for our protection over our houses, over this house, 
over our families, over our lives, over our jobs, and everything that we do, Heavenly Father. Thank you for salvation, and thank you for protection, Heavenly Father. Okay, and we're going to pray over sickness. So if you know someone who's sick, we're going to pray for Pete. We're going to pray for our family members, our spiritual family members. And if you know anybody that is going through stuff that you want to stand in the gap for, just just pray. Elton will pray, but just pray your prayer. Just pray your prayer out loud, as loud as you want to be. Let's just declare God's healing, power, and God's life, and God's breath over every single person that we know in the name of Jesus. I'm going to read Jeremiah 30, 17. <clears throat> for, I will restore you, for I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord, because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion for whom no one cares. For I will restore health to you. Heavenly Father, we declare in your mighty name full health this morning, God. You are our healer, Heavenly Father. It is not us, Lord God, but it is you, Heavenly Father, that heals the sick. Heavenly Father, we declare this morning under your authority, Heavenly Father, healing for the sick, Lord God. Healing under your house, Heavenly Father. We declare that, Lord God, anything that is not of you, Anything that is not of your purity, Heavenly Father, re be rebuked, Lord God, under your name, Lord God. Rebuked out of this church, rebuked out of people's lives, rebuked, Heavenly Father, in your mighty name, God. We declare freedom, freedom and peace. Freedom and peace, Lord God. Freedom in people's lives and peace, Heavenly Father. Peace, Lord God. You are freedom and you are peace, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the healing, Lord God. We declare that in your mighty name, Lord God. You are our healer, Lord God. Healer, healer, healer. Sickness be gone. Never to return in your mighty name, Heavenly Father. Never to, be, never to return, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we just lift up this world to you, Lord God. A world that seems that we are losing God. But we're going to take what belongs, take back what belongs to you, Lord God. We see the destruction happening, Heavenly Father. We see it, Lord God, with our eyes, Heavenly Father. That makes us sad, Heavenly Father. That makes us angry, Lord God. But we're not going to be sad or angry, Heavenly Father. But we're going to declare that the world is yours, Lord God. And we're going to take it back, Heavenly Father. We're going to take it back in your mighty name, God. We're going to heal. We're going to heal under your name, Lord God. We're going to heal people under your authority. Heavenly Father. Heal the world, Lord God. Heal the world, Lord God. We just pray for the nations, Heavenly Father, that are suffering, Lord God, that they be healed, Heavenly Father, and peace come on to these countries, Lord God. Peace, Lord God, and freedom, Heavenly Father. We declare in your mighty name, Lord God, in your mighty name, God, peace and freedom, Lord God, throughout the nations, Heavenly Father, that people will come together, under your name, Lord God, under your name, God, and take back what belongs to you, Lord God. Thank you for freedom and peace, Lord God. We're going to scream your name from the mountaintop, Heavenly Father. From the mountaintop, Lord God. We're not going to be ashamed of who you are, because you are our Father. You are our healing, Lord God. And you are our salvation, God. You are the reason you are the purpose that we stand here this morning, Lord God, because this is the day you have made. This is the day you have made, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you in your mighty name. Amen. morning we're talking about unity and about family so it was only fitting to stop and go as a family this is who we're praying for as a family this is what we're going to declare together because we are family and that's what God calls us to be so in two weeks we're going to have our all-in service right 
So we were going to call it family service, but every service is a family service. So all in service, which means every room, like the kids' church and every every room, <laughs> comes into the living room. That's sort of how we've made it be like a house. We all come together and we come and we sit together. So we're not we're looking we're thinking of bringing the kids at the front. Um, and we're going to do worship songs that will suit them, will suit sort of each age group. And then we're going to do a bit of a video. Um, we're not quite sure which one yet, but we have been going through Ephesians, so it could be the Bible Project Ephesians just to go through the whole thing. And then we're going to have someone come up here and do like a 10-minute uh, devotion that sort of ties it all in. It could really go a little bit under adults' head, could go a bit above the kids' head, but the whole idea is to come in bring all of us in together and also going to do communion so uh, families can sit with their kids and and do communion with their kids and it's a way of going on for once we're going to start trialing it on the fifth week of the month so four times a year so our first one is in two weeks on the last week of october bring everybody in together do communion in together and then we come around the table and we end with lunch right so that's the whole idea of this year is at the table so at the table with ourselves and jesus at the table with our church and jesus together and at the table with our community and jesus together which is what love langford is so we do that anyway so on the last week of october we're going to be doing all in service having communion together and then having lunch together it's going to look a little bit different we're going to have a bit of fun down here with the kids but it's going to be an all in service because every single room as we've said from the beginning of all of what god's telling us to model the church as we see family is just as important as each other it's not a babysitting service out there we're all in this together and we come together at the end of the on the fifth week and trialing this to see how we go all being together and doing communion together and and if you do love doing communion we are doing communion every wednesday night so we'll have someone different viv was this week someone different that will present communion in our back room after we do worship so it's communing together so sometimes communion we can take communion it can be a real individual type of thing our reflection and 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 what jesus did for us and that's all good that's what we're supposed to do but there's also times where we come together and we're actually communion with communion and that's what we're doing wednesdays weekly then we're doing monthly as a church so they're just some things that are coming up in the next couple of weeks because we are one body this is what god's calling us to be he's calling everyone to be that but the more and the more the more and the more the more i'm hearing around without actually speaking to different people you hear that god's placing that on the hearts of all churches like you really feel that it's not just isolated to this church oh something must be wrong because we're not coming together as a family you're hearing it more and more and more and i think as much as what's going on in this world can divide we're seeing that there's a call for the church to come together and unite unite one together we've spoken about the thousands and thousands of christian denominations that are out there and so then we can all fight amongst each other when there's one jesus there's one purpose there's one god there's one jesus that's it one faith that's all that there is but we will fight amongst each other and create discord and not have this unity and this is what God is calling his children back to be. So it's not just this church that he's calling back to unity and one body. He's calling the whole body. And we spoke a couple of weeks ago about um, us being the temple. It's in the message somewhere. But us being the temple, a whole temple, but a part of the temple. So there's a whole temple, the kingdom of God. But we're, we're a whole temple because he lives in us, he dwells in us, and he makes us whole. But we're a part of the whole temple. We can't do this life separately we can't walk this isolated he called us to be a body all right let's go back somewhere all right <laughs> 1 corinthians 12 12 to 27 i'm going to read this whole thing because here is the establishment of the body of christ just as a body though one has many parts but all its many parts okay, i'm gonna stop we all know most of us would know this scripture. But put this scripture into the context of you today. What does that mean for you today? What part does that hold for you today? Let's start again. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, 
but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ, for we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, when we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. I'm going to say that again for your life, for our life. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, every one of you, just as he wanted you to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body, but it, that its parts should have equal concern for each other. That its parts should have equal concern for each other. In, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Each one of you is unique. Each one of you is placed specifically where God wants you to be. Because we can all look at different parts of the body and go, oh, gee, I don't see, I wish I was an eye. I don't hear or I don't smell, I wish I was a nose. Like, you know, there's so many of us that can live in comparison and we miss everything that God's actually doing in our lives and the part of the body that we're supposed to be because we live in this comparison. When we are made uniquely to fit in the body exactly where he placed us to be. And where it says if one suffers, every part suffers, that's exactly what we did this morning. We know there are people hurting, we know there are people sick, so we stand and we suffer together and we pray together. But we know the victory of God, so we stand on that victory. We don't fall down but we stand on the victory together. And when one part is honoured, we rejoice. This is not, oh, well, we're so sad that that didn't happen for me because that happened for somebody else. And, and, you know, why doesn't that happen for me? And why didn't I get promoted? And why? It, it, that's not the case. We're also, we all are where God wants us to be. And if you know in your heart that you're not, then go search it out. Go find him. Go speak to him. It's not because somebody else hasn't put you in that position. If you're supposed to be in a position and you're seeking God, you'll be in that position. If he's growing you, if he's teaching you, if he's guiding you, if he's leading you, he's doing all of that. But if he ordained it, his promises are yes and amen. So if you're not in that position or you don't know that position, seek the Father. Find Jesus, sit at the table with Jesus. That's what we're called to do. All right, let's pray for this message. Okay, thank you, Father. Thank you, God, that these are your words, God. Thank you, God, that we rise up as one church, Father, as one body, Father, for you, Jesus, to make your name, Jesus Christ, known throughout, to spread your gospel, Father. We are your children, Father. We're your disciples, God. So we just thank you, Lord, that this is your word, your truth, our agenda's out the way, and your will be done. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm not a big Fast and the Furious fan, right? I don't mind them. He loves them. So I've watched them, you know, and, and I'm the, I, I have a horrible, horrible trait to myself that I can't not end a movie, even if it's a stupid movie. I have to watch it to the end. I watched a really bad movie one time called Birds. I think it was made in like 1950 or something. 
I've gone, what am I watching? It was a long time ago. But that's when I realized I had a real issue because I couldn't turn it off to the end. <laughs> and it was a terrible movie. But it, birds were attacking everybody. But anyway, so I watch Fast and the Furious. And when I do watch them, I watch them to the end. And I think I asked Elton yesterday, we're on season, season nine. Oh, not season, say not, not a season. Movie nine going on to ten, right? Did you know that Fast and the Furious is known for its particular saying of how strong family is? And family is said 77 times. It's one in, throughout, the, throughout the movies. It's one of the biggest recording meme, I don't know what, what you call it, but that made memes up to do with family. Vin Diesel, I think his name's Dominic, Dom, Dom, Dom would always say, I don't need this. Look at the memes, right? I don't need this because I've got family. This can happen, but my family's stronger. It, it happens throughout, right? They, it's, I Googled these memes, and I had an idea of showing you, and I thought, I'm just going to get distracted. But you can go Google these memes. There is so many memes about how strong family is, and these people go through, they will, they, there's action, there's, violence, there's all sorts of stuff in these movies. How many of you have seen Fast and the Furious? Yeah, quite a few, there's a few people. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, I've seen all nine. Anyway, <laughs> these people will risk it, their lives for each other, fighting crime, right? They're trying to fight crime organizations and they will actually risk their lives for one another. They're not blood, but they see each other as family. They're so strong as family that they will risk their lives for one another and they always have each other's back. And that's not blood. The idea of that, as much as it's Fast and the Furious, the idea of that is God's idea. For all people who believe in him are family. Don't have to be blood. Don't have to be blood. Are all family. So some definitions of family. Love is an essential thing. A person who accepts you for who you are and loves you unconditionally. Trust is another major factor. A true family is someone who can share secrets without the risk of you blurting it out to everybody. True family members are people who can depend on one another. They don't betray one another. Each member as equal and unique as each other. This is not hierarchy positions. There is all God appointing and there's all like God positions and all that sort of stuff. But we are equal together. This is not a hierarchy thing. We're equal and unique together. A family shares emotional bonds, common values, goals and responsibilities. It's like what Paul, our Paul, mentioned last week. <laughs> our Paul, because I'm speaking a lot of what Apostle Paul said. So I'm like, <laughs> what our Paul said last week, it's not conformity. It's unity right? It's not conformity. This is not cult-like. We shouldn't all. We're all made to be unique. We're all made to be different. So we're not all meant to be the same, because if we were all the same, we'd be developing a cult-like type of thing, right? But we're all created unique. That's why we're not all fingers, we're not all eyes, and we're not all nose. It's not conformity. It's unity. God designed diversity to all uniquely work together, Right? So he didn't say we all should be the same. He said we're all supposed to be unique together. We're all supposed to be different uniquely together. Right? So we've been speaking about Ephesians 2, 19 to 22 for the last. Do you know today marks two months since we've been doing this? Woo! Two months. I'm like going, I couldn't see the next week. And then we're going, now we're in two months today, Mark's two months. Anyway, that's just a little side note. So Ephesians 2, 21 to 22. In him, but how amazing God is, this isn't the scripture, but how amazing God is that, I was saying this, I don't know who I was saying this to, a few people. I was saying that someone asked me what my biggest challenge was in this time. And you can say the weight and you can say the responsibility and all that sort of stuff, definitely. Definitely use every single one of your names and praying for you individually. I can say I'm doing that. But when God would give me a message once a month and I would come here and I would just give you everything that God gave me, 
it was, okay, God gives me this and I give it to you. Oh, okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm not someone who's ever been good with public speaking, like public speaking. So it's not something that I was, yeah, God, I'm going to be on stage every week. <laughs> that wasn't me. And so then I thought, God, how would you give me a word every single week? Right? So that was a real thing for me. And because I'm used to him giving it to me and me giving it to you. But what shifted was, God, I can't just give everything you give to me and then give out. It's what is it that you actually want to tell them? What is it that you want to give to them? So now there's this how and what. And you know what? By the grace of God, every single week, there's a word. Every, and, and it's not just a word for this week and next week. There's a word for Christmas. There's a word for next year. There's a word for Easter. And it's being able to go, okay, I shelve that for this time. I shelve that for that time. That's not me. That's how good God is when you actually don't even know what you're doing. Because that's the truth. I'm not standing up here claiming to even have a clue what I'm doing. But I can tell you that between the two of us, we were talking about it this morning, there's just a complete dependency of, on God and what he's giving and what he's telling us to do. And by the grace of God, there is a message to give you every week because you're his children and he's not leaving you just out there to go, oh, well, I'll just, you know, Lisa's going to say whatever she's going to say because we all know when I'm trying to speak, I don't know what I'm saying. All right, so Ephesians 2, 21 to 22. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. We are the whole temple, but we're part of the temple. He dwells in us wholly, but he dwells with all of us together. We need each other. We have one single thing in common, and that is Jesus. That's what we have. To know Jesus, to know Jesus individually, to know Jesus together, to make Jesus known out there. We can make it really complicated, but that's what we're supposed to do. And only unity will make Jesus' name out there everywhere. So in Matthew 12, 47 to 50, Jesus emphasizes how important this family is, not the bloodline, the spiritual family. So while Jesus was still t talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. For years I have read this and gone, Oh, no, Jesus, how can you say that about your mother? Because <laughs> we all know I'm Italian and family's big in Italy. I'm sure family's big in every other culture. But when I go over this, I go, oh, how can he say that to his mum? I could never say that to who am I, who's my mother? And I thought, do I have a story that sort of relates here? And I'm not going to go into the details of this story, but there was one moment that my mum, I was in my early 20s, so I wasn't that young. I don't even know if I was living at home at the time. But my mum heard something that we all know I wasn't brought up. I wasn't Christian, so I did some things. And my mum heard some things. Um, and she took it upon herself with my brother, so mother and brother, and decided to find me at a nightclub, Elton's nightclub, mind you. So she comes at early hours of the morning. I'm not there, right? I've left. I've gone. But he must have copped whatever he copped, right? Because he was involved. We weren't together, but he was involved. And so she shows up, I think it was like 3 in the morning, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> to the club to go and to find me. And then she copped, Elton got it. But no, she didn't leave it there. I didn't have someone come and tell me, my mother and my brother are outside. I had my brother find where I was, knocking on the window at 3 a.m. and says to me, Mum wants to talk to you. <laughs> I was like, I'm going... Oh, no. <laughs> Imagine if that moment I said, who is my mother? <laughs> no, 
I didn't. I actually got out. I had to get up and I had to go outside and sit in the back seat of the car while she was going on and on and on and telling me everything that she had just heard. I was like, all right, then I got out the car. But anyway, I can only imagine if I said, who is my mother? No, no, no. No, I didn't. That was a true story. I won't tell you what happened, but anyway, that was a true story. So anyway, back then, family and identity was such a huge thing. Family was their identity. We see throughout the, throughout the Bible, son of this, son of that, son of this one, son of that. You go through the geolo- geology, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, geology. Yep. <laughs> you go through the bloodline, you go through all of that, and you see who was born of who. Bloodline was so important. The tribes were so important. That became their identity. So people are like, well, isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't he Mary's son? Wasn't she pregnant with him? I think we can just go over these scriptures and go, oh, that's normal to say. They're standing outside. Didn't she give birth to him? Didn't she raise him? Isn't that his mother? But yet they weren't there to support him. Like my mom coming to tell me, it was in good. It was good will. It was like, this is what I heard you doing. They weren't there to support him. It actually says they were there to take charge of him. I think it was Matthew, uh, Mark 3, 21, where it says, they thought he had lost his mind. They thought that he was crazy. So they weren't there to come, oh, Jesus, we believe in who you are. We want to support you. Let us in. It was like they want to speak to you. They want to take charge of you because, Jesus, you've lost your mind. This is his family. This is his hometown. Jesus, you have lost your mind. And we look in hindsight of that and go, how can they do that? How can they say that? Did they not know who Jesus was? Isn't it the same for us? It may look radical with things that we're doing. Or Jesus, you've asked me to do this. But that might be out of the norm. That might not be, you know, conforming to what I'm used to. Who is Jesus in your life? Do you question that? Will it make it look like you've lost your mind? Well, hey, it could. So he says right there, this is how the family is joined together. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And the Amplified Version adds, by believing in me and following me. That means we're all brothers and sisters because all of us here are believers. And if you're not, I pray you are by the end of it. And then we're brothers and sisters. That means we're family together. We're growing together. We need each other, just like we prayed this morning. Having a personal relationship with Jesus is not an isolated one. It's an inclusive one. That's why the you in the Bible so many times is plural. We read it individual because we want it to be about us. We want it to be an individual thing because he wants to grow us. It says we're growing, like we said a couple of weeks ago, we're growing, but we're being built. So we're growing. We want these scriptures to be about us because we're growing and we need to see what he's saying to us. But at the same time, he's building us, which means he's building us together. So it's, it's, it's together, we're growing and he's building us. And so at the table with Jesus is what we've been speaking about the whole year. Individually, together as a church, together as the wider body. That's what we're called to do at the table with Jesus. And it requires all of us to live with believers together, with other believers together, even if we all look different, even if we come from different backgrounds, even if we vote different. We are all joined together. The world is creating just this uh, division, just this division, but yet we're called to be united. So it's a no wonder why the world is creating division when we're called to be united. So even Christians are divided because the world's trying to divide us while God's trying to unite us. So the world's not going to try and unite us because then it's just going along with God's plan. So it's up to us to know that God's trying to unite us. So no, I'm not going to go with what this is. I'm going to go with what God says, what God says in my life. We hear so many people today just walked out of church because they're hurt or because something happened. And I'm not making light of your hurt. Hurts hurt. 
but God says, I want to restore you. We read his word, but we stay hurt. So where does that penetrate in our hearts, minds and hearts? Where does that come into us when we're so hurt or we're so disillusioned by what church, which is people, right? The only difference in us is Jesus. That's the only difference. And when we don't keep our eyes on Jesus, we start to sink. What comes out? What comes out of us? Because if Jesus is living on the inside of us, what are we speaking that's contrary to that? What is that that's coming out when we're pushed? Because we can all sing beautiful things when things are going well. But when things aren't going well, when we're pushed, what's coming out of us? What Jesus is speaking out of us? Or is it ourselves? Are we not aligning? We've, we've, we've listened to, and even with Novi, with the Dominion Life that Novi and Josh and Tristan were teaching here and their team were teaching here, just how the, the spirit and the soul just align with Jesus it's meant to align Paul was speaking about it last week just aligning the cross just aligning that's what we're supposed to do even when we're pushed what comes out because the church is people and if people are hurt hurt people hurt people I'm trying to sound cliche and all this you know oh that's clever We've heard it before, hurt people hurt people because they haven't restored it on the inside of them. So we think that we know what to say. We think that we know how to act. We think we know how to be until something happens which triggers the hurt that we have not dealt with, which triggers the hurt that we haven't restored, and then we hurt somebody. I don't believe that anybody, it's rare that anybody would intentionally hurt somebody but we do. You can turn on the news at any given time and probably see a church that's on there that's trying to get you, get the world to go against churches. So it's, I don't want to go to church because they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this. It's generalized and that's people. So people are generalized, whether it's from media, whether it's from people talking, because we're not unified as a body of Christ. So when we're going over here and we're speaking one thing and then someone's over here and speaking one thing, even though we're all believers of Jesus, it all looks different and sounds different. But if we're speaking out of the hurt because something's triggered, Christians will either bring people to Christ or Christians can get people to reject Christ. It depends on where we're speaking through. It depends what we're speaking I want to go to John 17, 20, 21. Because God wants us to embrace the diversities and he wants us to value our and your uniqueness. So we value our uniqueness, but value the next person's uniqueness. My prayer is not for them alone, the disciples. I pray for all those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The unity in God's people will make Jesus known. The unity with God's people will make Jesus known. So don't take yourself out. Believe the lie that you should be isolated. Believe the lie that you don't belong to a church or believe the lie that, because you hear so many times, I'm a believer, but I can be at home and believe. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm a believer, but I can be at home and believe. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we're family. We're family. And what happens is we take ourselves out because we believe, and that's an enemy strategy to get us isolated and alone. That's the enemy strategy to do that, because we're meant to be family. So when we believe this lie that we can still be believers and be at home by ourselves, he's isolated you, because the believer is one body. So you're a hand sitting at home, and you don't have an arm to move, or help you move, a finger, a hand, whatever, sitting an eye, sitting at home odd thought but an eye sitting at home 
don't belong to a face, right? I thought, but hey, we're talking about the body. I heard this story, and you know me and staying story, so I'm going to try and see if I can keep on it, all right? So picture a fireplace and a man called Bob. Bob wasn't going to church. He was living alone. And the pastor would call Bob to see how Bob was going. And one day, the pastor goes over to Bob's house, and the fireplace was going. And the pastor pulls a stick and starts poking at all the logs around them. And then he pulls out one of the logs. Then he's sitting with Bob, and they're looking at these flames, and these flames of the fireplace are going really, really strong. And then they look at this log, and the flame's gone. And Bob turns to the pastor and says, I will see you in church next Sunday. We are meant to burn together. We're meant to be on fire for Jesus Christ together. When we are isolated, our flames go, we grow cold because we don't have each other together with these flames, right? On fire for God. And when the Apostle Paul speaks about the body being joined together, he's saying that we need each other because we weren't meant to do this alone. Jesus says, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. He establishes right then the true definition of family. And it's not fast and the furious, but it's his idea of family. So many movies actually take God's idea and put it into whatever they do. This is God's idea of family. They weren't blood, but they were willing to die for one another because they had each other's back. They knew what family was, and they had one cause to fight crime. We have one cause to make the name of Jesus known throughout this world. Unify our body and make the name of Jesus known. Make disciples. Go out there. Spread the name of Jesus. Not be so caught up with ourselves being isolated and what's happened to me and our hurts. And I'm not making light of that, but God knows those more than any of us. God even knows what's going on when our minds are too loud to figure it out so go to him go to the holy spirit and say how do i deal with this these are the hurts that i'm feeling to know jesus in unity and to make him known so in genesis 126 it says let us make man in our image after our likeness i don't have it up there it's fine so we we know that god created man in his image not in our image right We go along and we know ourselves, most of us know ourselves, and we think God's made in our image. But he's not made in our image, we're made in his image, right? But we keep him walking with us in our image. What's his image? What's his character? Do we know what his character is? Do we know who he is? Do we know what he says? How do we live that out? Or is he in our character? We think he's in our image. We're in his image. So we're going to break down over the next few weeks or coming weeks what that means to follow in his character, what that means to be made in his image. What does that mean for us? Because as we were speaking about the the cornerstone and the, the rocks and building from the cornerstone and aligning that building aligns because of this cornerstone, we can commit to that. But if we don't know who Jesus Christ is, we're going to waver, we're going to go, because we don't know, right? We don't know. So we need to mirror him in his image. We need to find out what that is. And you don't have to wait for me next week. The whole idea is for us to go away and grow ourselves in Jesus, then we come together us in Jesus. This is our table. Even if we're not having lunch, this is our table coming together as one family. And it could be that you don't trust people, you don't like people, you don't really love people, you don't feel like you belong, you don't see how you fit in the body. My role is not to tell you how that happens, but I will tell you to go to the Holy Spirit because He knows what part of the body you are. He knows what's inside of you. He knows how much you're seeking him. Because I can sit here and assume every single one of you are seeking him daily. And then I can sit here and assume not one of you are daily. Right? It's not up to me. But I will tell you to go to the Holy Spirit and let him reveal to you what is that blockage. What is that blockage that prevents you from seeing your neighbor as family? 
from seeing the body as one body? What is that blockage? I, I know for me, and I've said this up here before, trust is a massive issue for me. Um, I have been spoken about a lot and I hear it. I've heard it in the past. God has dealt with me and dealing with me with a lot of that. So trust is a massive one for me. So I know that the Holy Spirit has to, because there's only so much that I will sometimes allow you to see um, or people to get into. And that's not a good thing because there's a preventing thing. Now, I'm not saying you blurt out your business, but there's, there's something that's preventing me and that's because of trust. So the Holy Spirit has to work with me with trust to see everybody as one body, as people that we don't betray one another as people that we can talk and we don't think our business is getting spread everywhere, as people that we love one another wholeheartedly. That's, that's, that's not an easy thing to do. And if it's not an easy thing to do, that's because something's blocking you from doing it. So what is blocking you? So I've listed a couple of things here to see what it could be. And if something triggers here, something else could be that's not on this list. You've been let down. Your expectations haven't been met. You've been gossiped about, you don't fit in, you're afraid people won't like you, you're intimidated, you have anxiety. There could be many other things. It could be your childhood. I struggled for many years to have an intimate relationship with God because the word intimacy and father did not connect for me. So that took me many, many years. So there could be a reason and something that's blocking you to have that particular relationship with, your, with Jesus, with your Father, with your Heavenly Father, because of something in your childhood. Ask the Holy Spirit what that is. So I'm going to get the band up. Praise God. I'm going to get you guys to stand. Now, before we go forward with this, if anyone here has either never made a commitment to Jesus Christ to be not only their saviour, because we don't need, we can be at home and be saved because it's what Jesus did for us on the cross through his blood that we have salvation. That doesn't go away. But to be our Lord and to go, I know who you are as my Lord because you're guiding my every step, that's different. So if you've never made the commitment of Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, place your hand on your heart now. And if you've walked away from Jesus, and this is your time now to come back to him, put your hand on your heart because we're going to do this prayer together. So all of your eyes are closed. Hand on hearts if that is you this morning, and we're going to say this together. Lord Jesus, all loud voices, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and as my Saviour. Take complete control of my life and help me walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that I have eternity with you forever. And I thank you, God, that you have now placed me in your heavenly, spiritual, eternal family forever. There is four people with their hands on their hearts, and I want us to give glory to Jesus Christ for those hands because you're now family. Now, with your eyes all still closed and the band starting to play, let's speak Jesus over everyone's life. I speak Jesus into your situation, but I want you to declare and speak Jesus over your situation. Ask the Holy Spirit what that blockage is. Is it fear of man? Is it trust? Is it betrayal? Is it unforgiveness? You don't know how to fit. Because He uniquely puts these stones together. And some of us come in a bit spiky. 
Some of us come in a bit smooth and we don't necessarily fit at the beginning and he sort of orchestrates the right people around us at the right time to rub each other and sometimes it goes the wrong way, but then it goes the right way when we're united as a cornerstone with Jesus Christ and then our blocks and who we are just fit together. And not because we look the same and not because we like the same things and not because we have things in common, but because he designed us to be together. So wherever you are at right now, ask Him to reveal that to you. Spend this week praying. Spend this week on your knees. Find that table with Jesus. Find that space with just you and Jesus. I just pray and speak Jesus over every situation that everybody is facing that is here, everybody that is facing that is online now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, reveal to the people what might be a closed door. And open that door up so Jesus Christ can make his home there. I thank you, God, that you dwell in us. I thank you that you've made a home in us, but that we're not just isolated as one one temple, but that we belong to one temple. And that's you, Jesus. We thank you for that. We declare your name across this place. And we speak Jesus over depression, over anxiety, over sickness, over families, over mental states. We speak Jesus. We speak Jesus in life. We speak Jesus in the families. We speak Jesus in the spiritual families. We speak Jesus in the communities. We speak Jesus in the broken homes. We speak Jesus amongst abused homes. We speak Jesus over substance abuse, over substance taking, over loneliness. We speak Jesus over loneliness. Loneliness can actually kill people more than diseases can kill people. We speak Jesus into loneliness because the truth is, with Jesus, we aren't lonely. So we speak Jesus into the hearts of every single person that feels lonely, that's here or online, or extended families or extended friends or community members, whether we know or don't know. In this world, we speak Jesus over lonely people. We thank you, God, for blessings over this church, over this world. May your name be glorified above all else over your universe, Father. May you be glorified. May the name of Jesus go throughout the nations and go throughout this world. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's declare, I speak Jesus. Break every stronghold and shine through the shadows, but like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear. speak Jesus cause your name is power and your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold and shine
still want prayer, church, more than welcome to come forward, we've got some leaders that will pray for you, God is good, amen, God is good, prayer is a big part of our life, I just want to encourage you guys, whatever you're going through, just reach out to God, He's our salvation, He's our healer. He's our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, church. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We're going to do some coffee and tea after church, so you're more than welcome to stick around and have a chat to people. But if you want some prayer, come forward. And our leaders will pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Thanks, church. Have a blessed week. We are here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Prayers on Wednesday at 6.30. We're going to do prayer, communion, and worship. It's amazing. Come on down. We can just pray together as a family. But have a blessed week, church, and we'll see you guys next Sunday.